Hey you, welcome back to my channel. You guys, Whoopi Goldberg, Marlon Wayans, and Shawnee O'Neal want you to know that they each have a book coming out. <laughs> they pretty much want your hard-earned money. They're putting out the most stupidest things in order to sell these books. They need you, okay? They need you. I don't even know where to start, but let's start with Whoopi Goldberg. Whoopi Goldberg says she was addicted to cocaine early on in her career, and it got so bad, apparently, that she started to hallucinate, okay? And this is, like, why do we need to know this? The memoir is called Bits and Pieces, and it's about how she was doing drugs from an early age, only to get clean in the 70s and then dive back into it again in the 80s as she was starting to hit the Hollywood scene. Guys, guys, listen. Her biggest vice was cocaine, okay? She said it was being distributed everywhere, you know, at parties, get-togethers between New York and L.A., she writes, I was invited to parties where I was greeted at the door with a bowl of quaaludes from which I could pick what I wanted. Lines of cocaine were laid across tables and bathroom counters for the taking. Okay. She says she was knee deep in cocaine. Knee deep in cocaine, huh? It was kicking her butt, she said. Well, her ASS, she said causing her to have hallucinations, and she confined herself to her room for long periods of time, okay? She described one scary episode where she was so high, she thought there was a monster under her bed, and she stayed there for a full day, peeing the bed too. <laughs> My goodness, we need to know this why. Let's continue. She got a wake-up call, when a motel maid found her doing coke in the closet, Whoopi saw herself in the mirror with white powder all over her face. She realized she had a major problem and had to get clean again. So that's what she did. Are you kidding me? This is the best you've got, Whoopi Goldberg? Whoopi Goldberg, this right here is what you think is going to sell your book? Revealing you used to be a cokehead as if we don't know this already? Tell us something that we don't know. Let me tell you something, Whoopi Goldberg. Because I am sick of you guys who feel like now in 2024, you guys think you could reveal any nonsense, right? And people are going to eat it up. No, we don't care about these things anymore. Half of Hollywood, if not all of them, are cokeheads, drug addicts, okay? Whatever heads, cokeheads, meth heads, all these heads, okay? We don't care about that. Tell us something that we don't know. Why don't you expose some people? Why don't you reveal the names of the people who abuse kids, okay? Women, boys, men. That's what we want to know. That's what's important. We don't care about your ex cokehead pass we don't care you probably still a cokehead now who knows i would not be surprised if you're still doing coke why not you guys need drugs to keep going so she really felt like she could just put some dumb ish out here and people gonna spend their hard-earned money how is that what is that doing for us us you telling us about this how is that helping us Knowing that you used to be a cokehead, that you used to hide under your bed, that you peed on yourself, that there were cokes everywhere you go, at parties, everywhere, events, like we don't know that already. What is, what is, what is that doing for us, honestly? What is that doing? How is that making our life better, knowing that dumb ish? Okay? Saying anything to sell, saying anything to get people's money. Who gives a damn about your, your, ex addict but get out of here Whoopi Goldberg I'm sick of you 
is 2024. You think news about you being a cokehead is news? Is going to be controversial? Hell no. Maybe in the early 2000s, it, when that came out, it would have been like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, what, 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 what? Nah, we don't care. We all know you guys are all cokeheads. Drug addict heads. <laughs> so please, spare me with your nonsense. We're not buying this stupid ass bug. Okay, we'll be. Unless you're revealing some names. And unless you expose some people. And the things that they do, the dark evil things that they do. That's the only when I'll spend any... Well, I wouldn't spend any money on that either. But still, that's that's when it will be worth buying. Okay, we'll be Goldberg. <laughs> Anyways, let's move on. Marlon Wayans, jeez. Where do I begin with this fool? This fool, Marlon Wayans, says he never got married because he didn't want his mother to be jealous of another woman. Do you guys hear this mess? This dude is 51 years old. You know Marlon Wayans, the actor, comedian? Yeah. He said, I never got married because I never wanted my mother to be jealous of a woman. Jealous. His mother. I never wanted my mother to feel second to any women. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> His mom died in 2020 at the age of 81. Okay? And this idiot is out here talking about he never got married because... So what's your excuse now, Marlon? What is your excuse now? And, the, and his mother was married the whole time to his dad, I believe. So what? He said she was very needy. Oh, my God. This is a mess. He claimed they discussed his single status and their final moments together. I told my mother on her deathbed, I never got married because I was always wanted you to be my number one girl. Those were my last words. Take that to heaven with you. What a narcissist. What? <laughs> you can't make this up. I'm telling you. These people, they want to sell books so bad. They don't have... They're not they're going to tell you what's really important. They're not going to expose what we really need to know. But little dumb shit like, I didn't want to marry anyone because I wanted my mother... Whoa, this is some sick-ish. Talk about a mama's boy. I can't stand a mama's boy that can't separate his mama and the women in his life. I guess they can't juggle the two. I mean, really? This guy want us to believe? That's why he never got married? Marlon Wayans, we're not buying that. Just come out the closet and stop wasting people's time. <laughs> come out the closet because this is not it. This is not it. Your mom was married. The whole time. Your mom, you have like 10 siblings, right? And you are the only one who didn't want to be married because she's jealous? <laughs> she's jealous. But all the other siblings are married. But Marlon, come out the closet and stop playing with people, okay? Okay? Like, because this is, like, come on. Come on, this makes no sense. He should have kept that. Why even put that out there? He should be embarrassed. This is so incredibly dysfunctional that <laughs> I just hope that no black men or their mothers are silly enough to read this and adopt this strange and ungodly viewpoint. It's a very dangerous idea to present and attempt to normalize within a culture where the family structure of man and female relationships are in shambles. The black community, the black black people are the least to be married, right? And this idiot want to come out and say, oh, I didn't, I didn't get married because I didn't want, I wanted my mom to be my number one. This is weird. This is on the same level of when R. Kelly spoke about how he was so in love with his mother and he would drink out her cup so that he could put his lips on the lipstick stains on her used cups, okay? He said he even remembered the brand and color of lipstick that she used. 
my goodness, it's obsession, it's borderline mental illness. Women do not give birth to their life partners. No. Imagine if a woman felt this way about her father. <laughs> he was in love with his mother. R. Kelly said that. He even asked her to marry him once. I see this could be I could go deep with this topic, but listen, we're just gonna keep it, you know, simple. Back to Molly Wayans, he needs to stop with the BS and just come out the closet because this is stupid. This is dumb. Okay. This whole I didn't want to be married because I wanted my mom to be my number one girl. Wow. But he's okay with creating broken homes, right? Yeah, create broken homes with all these kids. But yet, their mothers are not worthy to marry? <laughs> this guy is a weirdo. He's a weirdo. Oh, and he has a daughter, I believe, who thinks she's a man or a transgender. Yeah, so... Phew. These people are weird, okay? So let's move on to Shawnee O'Neal. Vashandia is her name. You know, you know her as Shawnee O'Neal. You know, she's one of the executive producers of Basketball Wives. Yeah. Oh, and she is Shaquille O'Neal's ex-wife. Shaquille O'Neal, the basketball player, the big doofy looking guy. Yeah, him. So she's the ex-wife. So she has a book to sell, and she thought it was a great idea to come out, reveal, in her new book called Undefeated, Changing the Rules and Winning on My Own Terms. Whatever that means, right? She revealed in her new book that she never loved Shaquille O'Neal the entire time they were married. <laughs> telling you this is like what like okay let me just ugh. she said i enjoyed those sweet early years being a mother and raising my children my days were always busy with kids and family and every now and then i got to travel or enjoy a little of the nba high life but invisibly my marriage was beginning to crumble Shaquille O'Neal made many excuses, so she never had proof that he was cheating on her. Oh, there was proof. There was proof. I believe there was a lot of proof. But anyways, she said, looking back, I don't know that I was ever really in love with the man. But I was in love with the idea of being married to the man I had a family with. I was in love with the idea of building a life together. This is, wow. She said, Shaq was trying to be a world-famous 30-something multi-millionaire with thousands of women throwing themselves at him and a husband and a father at the same time. So after the book was released, Shaq responded on Instagram. He said, trust me, I get it. I understand. I wouldn't have been in love with me either. Wishing you all the best. Or love Shaq. She should have kept that. She should have kept that. They've been divorced since 2011. It was finalized. Well, first, she got a divorce. She filed for divorce in 2007. But then she took it back. I guess because they worked it out. Right? They got back together. And then she did it again in 2009. And this time she said it was like, you know, it was broken. Right? And it's been finalized since 2011. We are in 2024. And your first book, you want to, and then this is the main thing? Because you have no material. Oh, I'm sure there are plenty of things she could tell. Right? But she wants to use Shag and how she wasn't in love with him. Like, you were married to him for 11 years. Like, why do we, like, why we use that to sell a book? Oh, let me tell you about her fake ass, right? Her fake ass. Everyone knows Shawnee O'Neal is a fake ass, right? Just like her TV show, right? Just like that basketball wife scripted nonsense, right? She is 
fake as hell and she's boring so i don't know why she felt like she could write a book who's going to buy this book who's going to buy shawnee's book that's why she needs to use freaking shack and now all of a sudden you was not in love with the guy even if you were not who cares why even put it out there and she's married let me tell you who she's married to a freaking pastor some fake pastor pastor anderson his name is what's his name a uh, Keon Anderson, okay? I didn't even know. I mean, I knew she got, she was proposed to. I didn't know they got married. No, I think I did hear that, but I don't care, right? But I f didn't know he was a pastor until the other day. So Shawnee married a fake pastor in 2022. So that makes her a first lady. Oh my gosh. From reality, fake reality TV show, scripted, right? Drama. BS to a first lady. You see the games that they play. These people, man, listen, this lady married this fake pastor. She married a fake pastor. Shawnee O'Neill Anderson. Sorry, she's not Henderson, not O'Neill. She married a fake pastor, Keon Anderson. And this guy is so. Mm hmm. Yeah, allegedly. Yeah, look him up. There's been rumors about him and other men, okay? And I'm not surprised because just look at him. Look at him. Look at him. Look at him. I'm telling you. Mm. But let me tell you. So they asked him. This is crazy. They asked him what he loved about his new bride, Shawnee. He said her fashions. Really? Okay. <laughs> oh, this guy was married twice before Shawnee, okay? Twice. His first wife has a gag order. A gag order, so she can't say a word. Now, the second wife, the second ex-wife, yeah, everything, I guess, yeah, he blindsided her because during the quarantine, they were all booed up. And out of nowhere, he left her. He left her for Shawnee, Okay? So you're already, oh, and they even had a reality, you know, so-called reality TV show, which failed. I heard that thing fell horribly. And that's what he wanted. He wanted to get in the door, right? Because once you in reality TV, now you can become whatever. You can say you're a pastor, Right? Doesn't this remind you of Megan Good and her fake pastor, ex-husband, Devin, Devin something, right? You see, these fake pastors, first of all, a real pastor, a real man of God would not even want to be in that entertainment world. They would not even want to be amongst these people. They would not. A real true man of God would want nothing to do with the likes of Shawnee. Megan Good, okay? So, yeah, that should tell you. So, this fake pastor, Keon Anderson, there was a little drama with him the other day because, I guess, um, in his church, like, during the service, he was singing, and there was a lady in the church choir, the praise, the worship uh, team. She screamed, I guess, I don't know, maybe the Holy Ghost got her. She screamed, and he walked all the way back there to say hush to her. He told her to hush, okay, which was crazy. So he felt the need to explain himself by going on a show, the Tamron Hall show, right, to explain himself about why he did what he did. What pastor do you know? Like, why do you even care what the public thinks? If you were really living for God and you were doing the right thing, why would you even need to go on the show? And it I want heard is his. 
I don't, I don't do this anywhere else, but something about the presence of God. High five everybody. You can reach on your way down and tell them I'm wired to worship. You may be seated. Don't, don't, don't get in between what I'm doing for God. You might not like it, but shut your mouth because this ain't for you. <laughs> do I have any real worshipers in here? You know, the, you get funny looks every once in a while from the worshipers who want to kind of tell you how you should worship. Do me a favor, tell your neighbor it ain't none of your business. How I worship him. I can sing off key, I can be loud as I want to, as long as it's coming from. Say neighbor, you want to know why? The reason why I worship him the way I am is because. Explain yourself, that is weird. And so, he said this was an ongoing thing with the lady for four years. That's a lie. That, that makes no sense. For four years, you've had this issue with this lady, right? But why is she still on the praise team, the worship team? She's on the stage every day, every time. But yet she has, you have, you guys have issues with her for four years? That makes no sense. And not only that, so if you told her about this all the time, that just tells you that there's no order in your church, right? There's no order because if you have to tell someone or you've been telling them for four years and then they don't stop, yeah, there's no order in your church. And I don't believe what he's saying, but let's just say, let's just, let's just play along. I don't believe what he's saying. So that means there's no order in your church that you could tell someone as a pastor, you can tell, as the leader of your church, you can tell someone something and they still do it? No. That's because they, that never happened. That's because it never really happened. That's because they normally are able to do it, but because you were in your, I don't know, you wanted all the spotlight on you because to hush someone for no reason, right? Because you're singing and you said, you got the nerve. This fraud had the nerve to say hush the only voice i want to hear is god speaking and yet he's the one that was singing so are you saying you're god keon anderson i'm telling you these pastors are a bunch of frauds especially when they are uh on your tv screen you don't trust these people when they are on tv when they mingle with the in hollywood don't trust them they are not to be trusted. They are fake. When they're marrying freaking uh, celebrity Z-listers, don't trust them. Okay? <laughs> so, yeah. So, listen. They have books to sell. They have things to sell. And they are willing to tell you anything. But not the important things. Not the things that could change things. But just be as stuff. Like, I was never in love with my ex-husband. Like, who cares? You married to a whole... You married now. And that was how long ago? And now? You want to make your first book as a first lady on top of that? To be about you never loved your husband, uh, your ex-husband? Who cares? Why is that important? Like, who, who the hell going to pick up a book about something like that? If that's all you have, you got to come harder. It's 2024. We don't care about how you never love. A lot of you guys don't love each other. You guys married for business. You guys married because you guys are put together, okay, and highly weird. So what else is new, right? You guys married for money. You guys a groupies who were chosen you know so <laughs> anyways I, yeah so they're doing a lot just to sell a book they put out the most stupidest the most dumbest stuff thinking yeah 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 that's that should do that would work that will do no we don't care unless you're exposing hollywood you're naming names okay we don't care about your drug pass will be and Marlon, we don't care about you never wanted to get married because your mother is jealous was jealous nonsense and then this one never was in love with my ex-husband but she's a married woman <laughs> oh gosh these people are crazy 
didn't willing to say anything, the bare minimum, right? Just to sell something, okay? But we're not falling for that. Nope, 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 nope. People don't care about the most basic stuff. No, come with the nitty gritty. Let us know what's really going on, okay? Then it'll be worth buying, okay? Shawnee O'Neill, oops, Shawnee Henderson, first lady. <laughs> My gosh. Oh, jeez. Okay. So, it's a mess. It's a mess. <laughs> so, let me know. Are you guys, will you guys be buying these books? Which one will you guys be buying, huh? Be honest. <laughs> please like. Please subscribe. Thank you for tuning in. Please like. Please subscribe. Please share. Okay? And I will see you on the next one. Peace.